Our readings today offer us a beautiful explanation as to how we can integrate two very important aspects of our spiritual lives, and that is the active and the contemplative. We start with the first reading from Genesis chapter 18. We see a beautiful integration right there. Notice what's happening here. Abraham sees three people. He doesn't wait for them to come to his tent. Rather, we're told he ran from the tent entrance to meet them. There's a beautiful aspect of hospitality and welcome. Pope Francis has told us to go out into the peripheries and encounter those who are in need and welcome them there where they are. So this is a beautiful way in which Abraham went to these three strangers. And then he showed them reverence. He bowed to them. It's not as if he said or gestured that they were fortunate to have him meet their needs. Rather, he acknowledged their dignity. This is, again, a beautiful aspect of hospitality and welcome. Studies have shown that welcoming hospitality is now, with this pandemic sort of behind us, at the top of the charisms that really can make a parish thrive. And for good reason, because people are displaced. They've been separated from each other. They've been under a lot of stress. We all have experienced that. And so to experience now welcome into a community of love, that's, as studies show, the top charism now in the church. Then, as you read the text carefully, you see a bunch of verbs, all very active. Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, make ready. And then he goes on to explain what he needs. Then he runs into the herd, takes the calf, brings it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. All these verbs indicate that there was an urgency to this service. We're reminded of the old saying, he gives twice who gives quickly. But here's the most important part of that first reading. Abraham remained focused on his guests. It says, when he set the meal before them, he stood by them under the tree while they ate. It's not as if he went to do the dishes or to clean up and left them alone. He was right there with them so that he was able to listen, which is why he heard the very question that the Lord asked, where is your wife Sarah? And he was able to answer. And then the promise is made that she will give birth in the year. Final point on that first reading. It's not as if Abraham knew these people, that they were relatives or friends. These were strangers. And again, how important is that for us today to recognize that many people are estranged from the church, from us. So we have to treat them as family and to say, you're welcome here. We remember what the letter to the Hebrews says in chapter 13. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. In this case, Abraham was entertaining God himself. He didn't know it, he just saw strangers. So that's the beautiful integration right there in the first reading. Now we come to the gospel, and there's a bit of a separation because Martha was serving. That was a good thing. She was not being criticized for that, but she was so overwhelmed by her many duties that she now became distracted from the Lord. She was not listening to the Lord. The reason we know that is because she was speaking. She interrupted the Lord as he was teaching Mary and she says, Lord, do you not care? So here we have Martha not focused on Jesus and his teaching, but on herself and her many duties, which so distracted her and frustrated her that she needed to be rebuked by the Lord. Now notice she's a saint in the church. She has a feast day in her honor. 
Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things, Jesus tells her. We can be Martha today so easily, especially when we have this age of technology where we can be multitasking all the time. We don't feel good about ourselves unless we're multitasking. We've got headphones on or we've got, we're doing two or three things at the same time because we are able to do it. Social media can draw us away so quickly and we can get distracted so easily that we take our focus off listening to God. The real answer is in that second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. He talks about a mystery that's now been disclosed by the new covenant. It's such a great mystery, he says, the riches of the glory of this mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Because of the new covenant, because of the Holy Spirit, Christ now dwells in our soul. We have a guest living in us. The question is, do we recognize that? Welcome the three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our soul and listen to their counsel. What we should do, what I should do, what I try to do is early in the morning, pray. Just take that time to reflect on who we are Children of God, God lives within us. He has a message for us today, even if it's 10 minutes. God can say a lot in 10 minutes. Just to be focused in on God and his plans for us that day. Then make an offering. Lord, my whole day now is an offering to you. My busyness, everything that I do for others, I do for you. I offer my body, my mind, my soul. Then when we get into the day and we get so busy, we can just maybe take a pause once in a while, maybe every hour or so, just for a minute, pull back and reflect again on who we are and who dwells within us. I'm reminded here of the second joyful mystery of the rosary, the visitation of Our Lady. She went to visit her cousin Elizabeth to give her help in her pregnancy, but she brought with her Christ. That was so powerful that she only had to make the appearance and everything changed. John the Baptist leaped in his mother's womb with the sensing of Christ's presence. Elizabeth cries out with joy. Then Mary serves. When we bring Jesus with us, having prayed, reflecting that he lives within us, then the Holy Spirit is with us as we do our serving in the day, and that enriches everything. We can be like the Blessed Virgin Mary, bring joy and fruition to all the efforts that we make and keep focused on Christ all the while. Finally, I'm just going to suggest a model. Mother Teresa. If you read any of her writings, she takes the time to pray in front of the Eucharist every day. Then she goes out and does her active service. All of her active service was so remarkable. Reading her writings, her diary, we come to a prayer that she prayed every day, and I'll quote this very short prayer, and it directly affects the interpretation of our readings. Here's her prayer to the Lord before she went out and did her service. Flood my soul with your spirit and love, O Lord. Penetrate and possess my whole being so utterly that all my life may only be a radiance of you. Shine through me and be so in me that every soul I come in contact with may feel your presence in my soul. Let them look up and see no longer me, but only Jesus.